Video games have long transcended the concept of just being a game. The medium has used its interactive format to bring us many, many different experiences. Personally, I would say that the term video game is somewhat outdated just by that simple fact. But, as it stands, the title of video game covers a plethora of genres, experiences, and formats. Like any media or art form, the boundaries of what can be done within these parameters has been pushed and tested several times over. In some of the earlier days of video games, there certainly was some questionable content, but uh, due to the graphical limitations, it's been somewhat overlooked as history goes on. It wasn't until video games became more accessible and more popular with a younger audience, while simultaneously becoming greater in definition and graphical quality, that some of this content really came forward to the spotlight. So, let's look at the foundations of ratings. In 1993, Mortal Kombat and Night Trap were famously scrutinized in a congressional hearing due to the hyper-violence depicted in Mortal Kombat and the voyeurism and supposed torture in Night Trap. Of course, the mark was somewhat missed with Night Trap, being that you are meant to be protecting the girls in the video game, but, you know, it still was pretty voyeuristic to be a guy watching in on these girls having a sleeping party, so I guess that's, to be fair, that's probably bad enough. But either way, this all led to the Video Game Rating Act of 1994, which was essentially a threat for video game companies to start self-regulating or else see greater consequences. Naturally, this didn't just end all video game controversy, but it did encourage the creation of ESRB in 1994. Its system consisted of five age-based ratings. Early Childhood, Kids to Adults, which was later renamed to Everyone in 1998, uh, Teen, Mature, and Adults Only. Later, in 2005, Everyone 10 Plus was also introduced, and by 2018, Early Childhood was dropped, as the label was scarcely being used, and E for Everyone sort of covers that demographic anyway. At a glance, these ratings are somewhat self-explanatory. E is for Everyone, 10 Plus is for 10 Plus, Teen starts from 13 and up, M for Mature, means 17 and up and then there's the dreaded adults only which is 18 plus but this one year age difference is actually a greater chasm than you would imagine just by looking at those numbers the AO rating is essentially just held on for real-life gambling um, extreme gore and everyone's favorite pornographic content so those three things are what would get you an AO rating and essentially means that anything with an AO rating isn't put onto typical store shelves, meaning that the average person just out shopping won't be able to find one of these games. You would have to go to a specialist store to, uh, to get these games. The most famous case here would be with the GTA Hot Coffee ordeal, which, uh, when discovered, pushed the rating of San Andreas up to adults only, which meant that it wasn't going to be available to a wide audience, as it wouldn't be stocked in certain stores. ERSP also includes some descriptors of what is included in the game, such as mature humour, use of drugs, and so on. Meanwhile, in the UK, we're using the British Film Institute to rate games the same way that movies are rated. So many of the older discs uh, still have that familiar stamp with the age rating printed on them, ranging from U for universal, meaning everyone, and that went up to 18, meaning 18 or older. 
That was used for a long while until it became more and more common for games to be rated by PEGI or P-E-G-I, the Pan-European Game Information, and by 2012 the UK fully adopted its European counterpart. The PEGI system also follows a similar pattern to the ERSB and it also has some descriptors on the back. Nice. So, generally speaking, games have been self-rated and self-governed in a pretty sensible way since 1994. That's in the West, however. I was a little bit surprised to come to Japan and find that many of the games that I was buying had absolutely no indication of any kind of rating anywhere. They're just a blank box. Um, like, there's nowhere to be seen. For example, this copy of King's Field has no discernible warning, no discernible rating sticker or icon anywhere on it. Uh, additionally, a bit later on, this copy of Eternal Darkness has simply just this warning along the bottom here and then nothing else noticeable on the packaging. Also, GameCube games in Japan came in much smaller boxes. Japan and its laws. Japan's censorship laws have always seemed pretty mm, different to us Westerners, and there's a lot to look at there. What with post-war Japan enacting stricter censorship laws to come across as being much more humane as well as some circumstances that seem to have two contradicting laws surrounding them. There's a huge amount to talk about here and how it's shaped the culture. While I will try to mainly focus in on video games, I think it's impossible to ignore some of these more apparent laws in what is considered decent. So very quickly, let's take a look at Japan's concept of what is and is not inappropriate. Part 1 sexual content. Okay, let's get this dealt with right from the get-go. The age of consent, according to the Japanese penal code, is 13. That law was put into place in 1907, and presumably before that, that was considered to be the appropriate age to give consent. However, in 1947, the Child Welfare Act protects any child under the age of 18. Because of this, there is a bit of confusion about what is and is not deemed appropriate. To a Western idea, many costume choices in Japanese video games are quite sickening and uh, really detract from what otherwise could be quite a decent game. While in Japan, you'd be kind of hard pressed to find anyone that outwardly sort of really likes it on average uh, but it also seems to stem from a cultural concept that goes back more than a hundred years by now so I'm not saying that it's the right thing to have this ambiguous content but it's something that hasn't changed for a hundred years. It's very much ingrained into the culture. Gosh. As I briefly mentioned before, there was a push by Japanese censorship to be even harder on certain things to create a more positive image of the nation after World War II, which means that direct and explicit nudity is often censored. For example, when I was playing The Witcher 3, uh, the, the models in the Japanese release always wear textured underwear. Um, it's part of the base model of each character that would be shown nude. So any nudity that is in the game is just taken out just by kind of a flimsy color texture put over any body part that would be shown nude. Um, and it just gives this sort of like sprayed on printed underwear uh, appearance and it was quite off-putting like I didn't buy The Witcher so then I could have some nudity like why I don't think anyone's buying games well I think most people aren't buying games to get some nudity 
but it did sort of dampen the experience because the characters were referring to each other as it being quite an important moment to see each other naked but they weren't seeing each other naked they were seeing like this horrible pixely texture and it was a shame like it was immersion breaking which is a shame but I partly understand because of this extreme censorship the, a lot of games and a lot of other media use loopholes to create really inappropriate scenes, like much more inappropriate than just being naked. Um, and they're deemed okay because they only imply nudity, they only imply sexual activity, and they only imply oh, a lot of nasty stuff. Um, you know, it seems to me that this genre of implied sexual activity or implied a lot of stuff has sort of bloomed and, and grown because of Japan's sort of sexual repression and just the, 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 the repression of like certain concepts and alongside the confusing age of consent laws that they have, uh, it's, hmm, yeah. 100% this is my biggest disappointment with actually living in Japan, uh, like the, the mistreatment of women, the depiction of uh, submissive female roles, and, and the way that children and, and women are treated is just really heartbreaking and sickening and I really hope that it's something that Japanese culture can sort of move beyond and uh, sort of work towards ousting because it's really it's it's awful it is sad um, for the longest time if you went into a convenience store there'd be pornography basically right next to the ice cream. Um, again, like, you, the kids wouldn't be able to buy it, but it's always right there in their face. It's right next to the magazines for the kids, and it's right next to, like, the ice cream or, like, chocolate bars or whatever. And it's, it's just there. It's all in view, and it's concerning. Uh, recently, convenience stores don't sell those magazines anymore. But sadly, a lot of like men's magazines or news magazines or even just magazines in general in Japan are still mainly for perverted reasons. Like kids' magazines will just have um, like uh, a girl in a bikini on the front, or like she'll be like sixteen as well. And she'll be in a bikini, so it's okay because, again, it's implied sexual promiscuity. You know, it's, it's, she's, what? She's just wearing a bikini. That's what you wear at the beach. Well, you know. So it's a lot of that. And it is sad because it is, uh, it's, it's creating this divide between people and yeah hopefully we can move on and just get rid of this part of the culture because it's so inhumane and antiquated anyway let's move on to something more cheerful gore and violence gore and violence in japan is a bit more typical to what you would expect uh they try to be strict on stuff that is really violent uh as it probably should be. <laughs> uh, and again, due to Japan trying to come across as more humane, supposedly, uh, certain things just simply cannot be shown. Um, I read somewhere, source needed, that um, decapitation is kind of like a big no-no for like uh, Japanese media. Um, I played Until Dawn, 
and on a couple of occasions it is quite heavily censored by the way that it just turns black like the screen turns black you still get the audio at first I really like this I thought that it was a stylistic choice of the game makers of the game developers um, because it faded to black and you could hear still hear stuff and like with horror your mind can always create something much worse than what you can actually see so that's what I thought they were going for uh, later on it seemed a bit more confusing and then I realized that it was just plain old censorship and it started to feel a little bit misused which is a shame yeah but that's pretty much it for actual gore and violence like yeah they try to cut out certain aspects which is Maybe you're right, there's a lot of gore and violence around in the world, so... Mm. <laughs> Part 3. Drugs. Every single drug in Japan is considered life-threatening and extremely illegal. Of course, smoking and drinking are excluded from that, obviously. Buying alcohol in Japan, you must be over 20, and uh, when you buy the alcohol, at the store, you simply need to press a button that says, yes, I'm over 20. Um, some vending machines have alcohol that you can just buy st straight from the vending machine. They're meant to have an ID check, but I, I think like 70% of them, just from my experience of, of seeing these uh, vending machines, they don't have any kind of ID check. So yeah. And there's lots of depictions of um, beer in like media for kids or uh, if I go down to the convenience store right now I can buy a bag of chips like potato chips that have just a picture of a cow drinking beer uh, so the beer is just present in everyone's life here in Japan <laughs> which is interesting uh, a lot of public spaces as well have a smoking area for them uh, including restaurants and cafes that will have like an indoor smoking section just like back in the 90s for most of the rest of the world um, and nightclubs are still just a smoky horrible mess however this is slowly getting ousted uh, while actually making this video some of the laws have been changing and I think it is now that a restaurant or a chain needs to apply for a license to allow people to smoke within. Uh, so hopefully the smoke will be going soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed because it opens up more seating for everyone. Generally though, uh, implied drug use is still in Japanese media. Um, it's usually reserved for the bad guys, which I think it usually also is in the West as well. Uh, however, anytime that a real life celebrity uses drugs, again, pretty much in any capacity, if they use drugs, they have to make like a public apology and it'll be like this massive press conference of them apologizing and then uh, their career will be pretty much terminated or at least put on hold until time passes by. <laughs> uh, most notably for video games at the very least uh, there was a case with uh, the Sega game Judgment where one of the main actors for the game was found to have been uh, in possession and using cocaine and he just got digitally removed from the game and replaced with someone that looks almost exactly the same and I'm pretty sure his voice probably sounds almost exactly the same as well so sucks for him it was bad timing the game just came out and it might have harmed the game a little bit but uh, it's really weird because the, the character that he was playing wasn't a good guy and it's just like I bet there's probably drugs in that game I bet his character even uses drugs in that game but you know, whatever. Part 4. Dancing. It is illegal 
to dance by moving your hips in a suggestive way in Japan. I think that this law has been lifted or is in the process of being lifted, but at the very least, um, it was at some point illegal to dance in Japan, and I, I feel like it's maybe still in effect in some places. But I don't think that's gonna really affect games too much. Right, so with all of that established, let's move on to how Japan actually deals with censorship and rating of games. Japanese video games rating system. As I mentioned before, many games that I've come across in Japan just haven't got any kind of rating on them. And I was surprised to find that this goes up until the PS2 era. So let's look at what, when, why, and what, and when, and why, and when. When was up until 2002, each individual publisher in Japan took it upon themselves to perform their own regulations. As you can see by the previously mentioned King's Field, sometimes that seems to have amounted to nothing. Um, and then in the case of Eternal Darkness, it's just simply this warning uh, which says this work of art is something something else has shocking scenes so eternal darkness has shocking scenes I mean what does that mean what does that mean could mean a lot of things So generally these different warnings didn't really have much effect and they would range from publisher to publisher. I have Dino Crisis and Silent Hill which were developed by Capcom and Konami respectively and they both have giant triangles with a warning sign on them so at least someone down the line sort of agreed on that. Capcom and Konami also added on indicators for what genre the game is. As you can see, X-Men vs. Street Fighter is versus fighting. Dino Crisis is panic horror, which is pretty cool. And Silent Hill is horror adventure. I think we would say that it's a psychological horror now, but at the time, horror adventure was best fitting and Snatcher is a straight-up adventure game. It's also worth noting that some Kojima games added an additional genre to them. Snatcher here is listed as a cyberpunk adventure, and quite famously Metal Gear Solid is subtitled as being tactical espionage action. So at least that line lines up to say that they have grotesque scenes, but when it comes down to it, that's more or less the same as the just small bar of information on Eternal Darkness. I think all of this is partly due to the fact that video games in Japan are actually somewhat more niche than you would expect. Uh, Japan loves to identify and categorize things, especially humans, and their characteristics. Uh, it is a culture based on generally looking after one another by maintaining a respectable distance both uh, physically and emotionally. While at the same time the culture is acting on a sense of uh, collective collectivism <laughs> on like a collective mindset and uh, everything serves within clear hierarchies which can be seen in the speech, in the writing, by having many, many honorific, uh, honorific pronouns that denote who has more power and respect. Because of this, it seems that games seem to have stayed as being more of a otaku thing, and I feel like that's somewhat evident by the fact that there's no actual game stores in Japan. Um, you you can you can go to a department store and buy games at a department store 
or you can buy them from a second hand store um, but that's pretty much it or maybe a toy store yeah that's that's pretty much it like there's no sole game retailer like the UK has game and America has GameStop I, f I forgot already granted these establishments are slowly disappearing but it seems somewhat evident that there is a bit of a cultural difference there and of course this is all speculation on my part uh, speculation from my observations of living and working in Japan for five years and that five years has also shown me that Japan very much operates on a system of if it's not broke don't fix it and even if it is kinda of broke it's something that we've been doing for a while anyway so why would we want to change i.e. many 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 companies still rely heavily on facts sending information by fax using a phone line to send a document to print out at your place the information is sent through the phone through a phone line to your place and it comes out of a printer fax so in 2002 Caro uh, was born from Kessa so what does that mean let's have a look so Kessa C E S A is the Computer Entertainment Suppliers Association which is a Japanese organization which was established in 1996 in order to promote the computer entertainment industry with the aim of contributing to the strengthening of Japanese industry as well as further enrichment of people's lifestyles. Mm. Uh, the CESA also organizes the Tokyo Game Show and the Japan Game Awards. Therefore, it's basically the Japanese video game government. So, Kessa also made Kero, or maybe Sero if you want to use a soft C for this name. And Sero stands for Computer Entertainment Rating Organization, which is pretty self explanatory. Let's have a look at how the CERO rating system actually works. It ranges from A to Z, A being universal for everyone and Z being 18 plus. Naturally there aren't 26 ratings uh, because it skips from D to Z. Meaning that the A and the Z are really easy to distinguish and see this one is for everyone and this one is not. Uh, with the three in between needing a bit more of a closer inspection to make sure that parent is buying the right thing for their kid or that the person is selling the correct thing to a customer which I, I think is good I think it's good to have very clear this end and very clear this end and then a bit more ambiguous in the middle uh, because it means that you're actually going to want to go out of your way to actually read the content and find out what it is that you're buying and while Halo does get that 15 plus soft M rating that's missing in the States, you still got Fable landing an even harsher rating for ages 18 and up. In fact, a lot of Western games get that, and that's their equivalent to the AO. Something in them is taboo. Here, George of Super Bunny Hop incorrectly says that Z is the same as an American AO. Uh, George is sadly wrong here, so let's let's have a look at that because let's just clear up some misinformation that might be spread so going into finer detail A is for all ages uh, B is for 12 plus C is for 15 plus D is for 17 plus and Z is indeed for 18 plus however while that does seem very much like the ERSB it's quite different <laughs> um, if you just look at the at the written facts y yes it's the same 
but if you add in actual complexity and context then uh, it is not the same at all. As you can see here in this clip, I've picked up a bunch of Z games sat right next to the A to D games. In Japan, games that are marked Z for 18 plus are more in line with games marked M in America and 18 in Europe, because you guys, everyone in America, please stop thinking that the American way is the universal way around the world. It's not. There's a lot of people up there that if they see something marked as 18, they don't think that it means that it's adult only and banned from store shelves. It's not the same. It's not the same at all. The only thing that keeps these Z games apart from the other ones is the little small banners that say this is a Z rated game. Um, actually it's, it's harder to find an Xbox game than it is to find the supposed adult only games. Uh, the Xbox games could be hidden anywhere around the store for all you know, whereas the Z games for like the PS4 or the PS3 are right there next to, you know, the ones that you're going to be looking at, like the SNES games and the, <laughs> the PS4 games and the PS1 games and the NES games and the uh, Dreamcast games. You know, they keep all the ones that Japanese people actually want to buy all together and they put Xbox some other place. However, the sex games or erotic software is kept in a whole other floor of the store um, or behind a curtain because that stops people. I didn't record the adult only floor for many reasons including the fact that I just don't want to go up there. So these games are kept much further away and they're more akin to the adult only games uh, that were previously mentioned, the ones that would need to be found at a specialist store. I've seen a couple of other YouTube channels make the same mistake of saying that uh, Japanese Z is the same as an American AO. It's just, it's not, it's not. Uh, Z games are not hard to obtain. Z games are sold like any given M rated game or 18 game in, in uh, Europe. Z-rated games are sold like any given American M-rated game and are actually probably more censored. In fact, they definitely are. For all the reasons that we talked about earlier, uh, Japan is not showing any of the beheading, Japan's not showing any nipples, not, Japan's not showing anything. Again, while making this video, I have actually since discovered that the Japanese uh, laws uh, have affected the way that I'm making this video in that uh, The Last of Us 2 had a portion that was censored. I didn't notice when I was playing, because I guess they did it in a fairly good way, but they cut out a sex scene, which I, you know, when the game was playing, like it built up to it and then it cut, and it seemed like a reasonable place to cut. Uh, I guess there was nudity in there. I didn't even know that, didn't even need that. Um, but now that I think about it, when I played that part of the game, I was having major audio glitches, so maybe uh, the Japanese publisher didn't do such a good job after all. Who was the Japanese publisher? Oh yeah, it's Sony. Come on, Sony. Get yourself together. Some examples from my shelf of what falls into which category are the following. So, first of all, Right here we've got the color spectrum going from black to red to indicate at a glance what's going on. So Minecraft is an A. Very clear to see. Easy peasy, that's an A. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is a B. Yep, that's the sort of stuff. As you can see, pretty simple. And that's guy. Um, C, we have Monster Hunter World. A bit more violent than the two of those, but still pretty inoffensive. In at D, we have Dark Souls 3, which is a pretty grim, foreboding affair. Makes it in at D. 
and then here at Z, Prey, which um, from memory wasn't all that gory or anything. What else is also Z though is Last of Us 2, which is a much more mature game, I think, in a lot of things. Um, C-E-R-O also has the handy dandy identifying content icons to help understand what's in each game. For that we have love. Love contains expressions of romance or love, possibly includes kissing, hugging, dating and other expressions of romantic desire or relations. There is also sexual content which contains expressions of sexual relations and or sexual activity, possibly including swimwear or suggestive outfits, exposure of underwear, nudity, suggestive behavior, immoral thoughts, prostitution, sexual contact, and or activities, and other sexual content. Uh, I think none of those games that I just displayed have that one. Following up, we have violence, which is more or less self-explanatory. Horror, which contains frightful or horror elements, possibly including traditional horror characters such as ghosts, zombies, vampires, or other elements of the occult, as well as moments designed to frighten, usually used to designate games that may scare children. The horror icon might not be found on frightening games outside of lower age ratings even in games that fall into the horror genre. Uh, for example, there is no horror icon on The Last of Us Part 2, despite having zombies of a sort and being quite a tense, horrible situation. Drinking and smoking. Gambling. Crime. Crime contains criminal activity, either by depiction or interactive form. So I guess that just means showing crime happening in the game or being the guy that's actually doing it. Possibly includes illegal activity, dangerous and unlawful behavior, abusive behavior, prostitution, rape, organized crime, and other criminal acts. Uh, drugs. Again, uh, Japan is pretty strict on them drugs. And finally, language, which is a little bit more bizarre, seen as um, there's not really many or any bad words in Japanese. I mean, it's it's mostly due to uh, the intent of what you're saying, as opposed to the actual word itself. So that might be a little bit harder for them to figure out. But yeah, that's, that's the icons. Um, they seem pretty useful, a lot more useful than, uh, you know, just putting on a like a vague warning. I have this uh, older game here from when Cero or Kero uh, was using an age rating. So at some point, there was no icons and there were no A to Z rating. They were using ages just like a lot of other countries so here this game Crimson Tears by Capcom uh, just simply says that you've got to be 15 it doesn't say anything about what's included I mean you can probably tell by the cover that there's uh, some anime boobs but in Japan, there's anime boobs everywhere. To wrap up, I think it's pretty safe to say that the rating system in Japan is pretty solid. A lot of information is given, and given clearly thanks to the color coding and the icons on the back of each game. Games in Japan tend to hold their price a lot longer than in the West. Um, for example, I, I can still find nearly full price copies of Anthem for sale, 
no one's going to buy them, but it's still holding that price. Um, and I feel that even people that aren't buying for kids or buying as a present might want to, you know, make sure that they're spending their money wisely and on something that isn't going to offend themselves. I'd love to talk more about this. Uh, it's something that I would really love to like look more into. Um, because it's it's interesting how it can affect pre-censorship and the way that um, creators, developers might try to aim for a certain market before they aim for the story that they're trying to tell or the experience that they're trying to give. Um, hopefully the developers themselves aren't doing that too much and hopefully they're aiming for the best experience no matter what but obviously the publishers need to look out for what is going to sell and there needs to be a synergy between everyone involved the audience the publishers and the developers so it would be really interesting to look more into ratings and stuff but I feel that I can't really say much more beyond this point without it uh, being a bit too speculative for, for what I want to say here so given that I can't currently see within uh, the rating systems of any given organization I, I don't want to overstep and just spread false information so I hope that I've cleared up some stuff um, about how it works in Japan I hope that this has been interesting and I would I would love if if there's anyone that knows more about this I would love to hear about it please go ahead and send me a message um, tell, tell me if I'm completely wrong about any of this um, help share the information if you have any insight on this stuff let's talk about it in the comments and stuff like that uh, it's been interesting to, to go through this um, even just on the brief little bit of research that I've done uh, I've, I found that Japan's ways have been a little bit different from the rest of the world but now it's pretty much all in line together we went from nothing to just having triangles to having ages written on to a clear defined system and it only took them maybe 20 years <laughs> no and it you know like the the streamlining of this is actually quite quick like i i can joke that it only took about 20 years but there's you know a lot of issues in the world that don't get like enough attention and I think that these governing bodies are doing a very good job of making sure that everything's suitable for everyone anyway that's been me this has been fantastic I'm not, this is a bit of a bizarre one don't really know how to end it so I'm basically going to This copy of Eternal Darkness. Whoop.